Mike, it's uh, a lot going on here. It's a lot going on here today. We've you got, like you said, a big matchup coming here. Cloud9 versus Epsilon, these two teams. I'd have to say I'd put them pretty evenly matched. I mean, these guys, they, it could go either way uh, between these two taking that, that second spot in their group, as I predicted them. Uh, but who, who do you think you have winning this match? I don't want to call it, because I'm a little bit biased. I'm not sure if any of you can tell, but I do hail from the same motherland as Epsilon Esports. However, I'm going to keep my slippery silver fork tongue behind my teeth, and I'm going to be as neutral as possible throughout the entire cast. Uh, that is, uh, that's a pretty big ask right now. But let's take a look at those teams. Speaking of Epsilon, of course, let's take a little cheeky peeky at these graphics. There is Buck 20, Buck 57, of course, the twins you may have seen a, a very very tight tasty YouTube video featuring them recently there's Jim Bossity of course big time twitch streamer a lot of fun you've probably seen him a couple of times and of course snipe drone and there the boys are Jimbo hood up there's the twins in the middle and snipe drone on the end and of course keys to victory for Epsilon right now they really need to play the same as they did at X Games for those of you who saw that they took a, a series off of Renegades they played out of their skin they really need to to reincarnate that version of Epsilon uh, and I feel like the Bucks if they can play a little bit more selfish if they can if they can sacrifice uh, themselves a little bit less than they usually do. I think that's something that's going to really help them out. And of course, last but not least, unleash the Jimbo. You'd be crazy not to, right? Yeah, I mean, that squad, they, they killed it at X Games. They came in strong. They took down Renegades. If they can come in with that fire burning still, I, I think we're going to see one of, the, one of the best matches of the entire event here because they're just so evenly matched. And then you look at Cloud9, we have veteran players like Cloud, Hysteria, Assault. These guys have been around for a long time. Here you have it, their team layover. Hysteria, Assault, Cloud, and Dinoxide. Dinoxide is the new young gun of the squad. So these veterans are kind of teaching him how, how to play in this type of environment. Uh, but these guys have, like I said, have been playing for a long time. Cloud has been competing since 2007. So a lot of history going on between this team. The keys to victory for this team, though, Assault needs to stay alive. He's always leading the charge. He needs to stay alive and just wait for his teammates. Cloud, he's got to cause a storm. Just get those power weapons. And then last but not least, single out Snipe Drone. Don't let him get that Sniper. If he gets the Sniper, you're done. You're done. You got you to gotta weasel your way in and get behind the, the wrath of the Bucks and Jimbo and get them out from that corner. That sounds like a very easy way to win a game, right? It all sounds simple. It sounds of, simple. Of course, it's going to be a tiny little bit harder on the day. Now, we have our players. The pieces are set. But let's take a look at the maps these guys are going to be playing on just in a moment. Of course, up first, Kali, CTF. Mike, one of your personal favorites, I believe. Yeah, definitely uh, one of the one of the top game types in our game. Just the symmetrical map, just capture the flag, works perfect on it. Classic Halo, of course, up next, the Rig Team Slayer. Following that, there will be Eden Strongholds, I think, personally, my favorite game type of all time. However, up after that, Truth CTF, which, of course, is a throwback to classic, mid classic midship. Throwback to Halo 2, so what a game type uh, to have in the, the start of the series. Just another symmetrical map, great for CTF, great for Slayer, uh, just Wonderful map to have in the in the midst of all these other brand new maps we've seen in Halo 5. Oh, it's nice to have a little touch of the familiar in there, Mike. Now, of course, Plaza Team Slayer will be the final game if we have to get that far. And you know what? To be completely honest, Mike, I'm really hoping we go to that game. I'm hoping that this goes to the absolute edge. I, mean, I want to see those players stretched as thin as they can be. I, I think <laughs> both of us and everyone at home wants to see game five, game five, game five. And you know what? Once we get... Once we get to the final eight, they want to see game sevens. I want to see every it. single one just down to the wire, 50, 49, 100 to 99, three caps to two caps. Let's just let's just make it as long as it can go and make it as tenor, and excuse me, as entertaining as it can be. I want to sell my soul to the Guardians or to, to whoever is in control of these kind of things so that we can see that happen. Of course, you can see the players on screen. Everyone's just getting ready. Games are loading and everyone's making sure that their settings are all good. Their Spartans are looking pretty. Now, speaking of pretty Spartans, some of you may be aware of the Spartans Armory Rec Pack, which is available now. Uh, there are 14 new weapon skins, Mike. And I, 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 it's safe to say we'll be seeing quite a lot of those today. So keep your eyes peeled for some of those new weapon skins. Uh, a lot of the players will be brandishing them. And I had a little cheeky peek of them yesterday and let me tell you they are pretty sick so if you haven't already picked up the Spartans Armory Rec Pack I strongly recommend that you get to the marketplace I believe it's the marketplace and dive on in there spend some of that hard-earned cash because boy howdy are they cool yeah hop right into the rec store and, and we've been seeing so many cool new skins throughout the series uh, of all these events just uh, the pepperoni skin that's a hilarious one that oh. we've seen some some really goofy funny ones and then we've seen some more serious ones uh, I think one of my favorites is uh, the Mr. Chief 
the, the hilarious Dude. Mr. Chief. Dude, just, I, I want Mr. Chief so bad. I've dropped so much money in rec packs, I still haven't got it. I, I still, I mean, I work at 343, and I, I don't have nearly 75%. I wouldn't even say 50% of everything unlocked yet. So I'm still, I'm still on the grind. Still on the grind, dude. We should all still be on the grind, especially because uh, you know a lot of these games, like the players and uh, and all the and all the teams involved, everyone's wondering what happens next. Of course, there'll be more news on that a little bit later on. But you're gonna have to stick around for that kind of news, guys. Uh, of course. Um, again, well, let's keep talking about. I want to keep talking about rec packs because now I'm on the rec roll. You know, I don't want to be rolling nobody, but I am on a rec roll. If you tune in on Sunday, for those watching here, I'm sure you'll be tuning in on Sunday if you've even if you've even heard of Halo. I think Sunday is a day that you've you've plastered in your calendar. There will be the Halo World Championship rec pack, which is uh, is going to be coming out on Sunday. You're going to need to tune in on Twitch on your console. You get an exclusive Halo World Championships emblem, and you're going to get a sweet Challenger armor set. Now, I've actually told my neighbor to go into my home to break into my home. I don't give a rat's. They're going to break in. I've given them my code for my Xbox. They're going to log in and make sure that I get that because I really want the challenger pack. <laughs> there you go. Well, now you see we've got Bucks on the screen, the Epsilon side going against Cloud9. Both these teams, like we said, equally matched up. But you see a uh, little smile is coming from the Bucks. Just they're feeling relaxed. They're feeling good. You see uh, Snipe Drone, though, just just straight faced onto the screen. No joking around for him. No smiles. He came here and he came to win. Talked to Jimbo a little bit before the match. They said they feel good. They're up a little bit earlier than they're used to. Uh, it's a it's an early starting point here over in California in Hollywood. 9 a.m. for us over here uh, on the East Coast. 12 12 p.m. But it's a, it's a it's a morning it's a morning thing that these players are gonna have to get used to 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 waking up, getting the blood pumping. And uh, there you, there you see Jimbo all smiles, just laughing with his coach right there. And then on the other end. Let's take a look at Cloud here. We've got Dinoxide. Uh, this is the new young gun that we were talking about. He's got an incredible shot. And we see a lot of new young players coming into the scene right now. We've seen some of the guys on Denial. Almost all of them. We've seen Boo Boo Doo Boo. We've seen Hook. Just all these young players with in individually, they are just incredible with their shot, with every single weapon. And then they're just slowly learning the, the team-oriented side to everything. And that's why you see a lot of the veteran players picking up these young guns and kind of showing them the ropes ropes when it comes to to using teamwork and uh, you'll see you'll see the young guys slowly pick it up and just become these powerhouses that are honestly better than the veteran players towards the end but uh, incredible incredible lineup from both teams there now you see assault on your screen uh, good old assault has been around he was on optic gaming left optic gaming for this squad and ended up making it here to the final 16. Very impressive stuff, of course. Commiserations to all the teams and all the Spartans, all the fallen warriors that couldn't make it here today. However, of course, this is it, boys. This is the top 16 of the world right now. They managed to make it through the qualification stages. And I mean, I want to talk a little bit about the qualification stage, Mike. You were actually in London to see uh, Epsilon win Gfinity, I believe. And then also uh, the EMEA regionals where they had an impressive showing, but they kind of fell a little bit short. What happened there? Yeah, Infused, uh, they've been working just to, to strive to beat Epsilon. And you know, people said Infused was better than Epsilon in the past, past Halos. So uh, Infused was kind of felt uh, out of place. They weren't used to the fast new gameplay of Halo 5, and it took them a little bit to adapt. So we saw once like Chalky, Blackjack, those players adapted a bit more to Halo 5 and got a little bit more time in. Uh, we saw them take down Epsilon, but uh, I know some of the Epsilon guys and the Epsilon fans would, would like to say that those guys were traveling around from X Games. They immediately came back to Europe and had to play in the EMEA regionals. And uh, that was kind of uh, not an excuse, but that's I why was, I they... I think it was an excuse. Mike. Okay, I maybe think, it, was an, it excuse, was an excuse. But uh, yeah, so I mean... It, it all comes down to who shows up on the day of, of the tournament. And uh, when you have close matches like this, uh, I mean, it's really hard to say who is going to win. Uh, like you said, you don't want to put any favorites. Uh, I think if there is a European team to win and move on from the pool play, I think this is it. I think Epsilon has the chance to take down Cloud9. Uh, when we look at the other side of the pool, let's talk a little bit about that other side of the pool real quick. When you look at Renegades, you Renegades and Infused are kind of like the the second and third team in that in their pool. Uh, and if Renegades Renegades or excuse me Renegades is a great team, but if they show up a little bit rocky, Ninja can let things get to his head sometimes and become a bit emotional. And then you know Spartan the dog right after that becomes a bit emotional. Uh, so those those players will uh, will will 
will fall apart. But let's take a look at Group D again. You've got CLG, Team Skyfire, Epsilon, and Cloud9. So all of these guys are going to be fighting to make it out of this pool. My prediction, Miles, I'm going CLG and Epsilon. Oh, Mike, Epsilon, that is a big call. I honestly believe this game is going to be the most crucial game for that second place. Because I think we're all assuming that... <coughs> excuse me. We're all assuming... <coughs> I'm getting a bit choked up here. I'm not sure if you saw that <laughs> video, but dude, the feels are It's real. a lot of Halo happening here. <laughs> the feels are so It's a real. lot of Halo. But uh, um, everyone is assuming, and I think rightfully so, that CLG are going to make it out of the group. It's very, uh, you know, come on. The, the online record right now and the, how heavy they came out of the NA regional so strong. And, uh, and online practice has been almost flawless. It's been going very, very well for them. Yeah. Um, so to, to put them down as, a, as anything but first place of this group is kind of crazy. Uh, but the second place position is definitely going to be between um, Epsilon Esports and Cloud9. Skyfire, I don't think they have entirely what it takes to, to hang with some of those teams at this moment, but they can definitely prove us wrong. Anything can happen here in Halo 5. But as I said, Mike, this game, this series is going to be incredibly crucial because there's every win in this series is going to count towards potentially getting out of this group and into the quarterfinals, which is honestly huge at this stage. If you can make it out of the groups at this tournament, you are literally writing yourself into Halo history forever. And, and that's a that's a big jump up uh, in, in prize money too. I mean, you're going from twenty thousand dollars to seventy five thousand. That's incredible. So that's a you're that's playing a, a sixty or excuse me fifty five thousand dollar pool play match or pool play matches, and then once you get out of the pool play, I mean, I, we'll talk about the, the jumps that you go up from each each match then, but they are big jumps. I mean, the people are going to be playing $250,000 matches. I've, I couldn't even dream that somebody would be playing a game with that much pressure on it for Halo. I mean, this is, Mike, this is a, I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I'm not going to jazz this any other way, but this is a dream come true, I think, for almost everyone in this room. I mean, look how big Halo is right now. For those of you who aren't here, I, let me paint the picture for you. The scenery, the lighting, everything. There's red and blue everywhere, and there are three tremendous screens projecting Halo World Championship across the place. This really is it. We back, guys. Like, we back. I know everyone says we back, but... No. Actually, that kind of disappeared for a while, but we are back. I think we it's because we kind back. of are back. Now, if I didn't know any better, I'd say we are almost getting ready to go, but I can't promise you anything. Guys, there is Cloud9 on the left in the red corner, and of course, donning the blue trunks will be Epsilon Esports. Now, again, Mike, you're calling out Epsilon to win this one. Yeah, you know, they, they are the underdogs. I'm going to be honest. They are the underdogs, but... Okay. Uh, from what we saw at X Games, and we've, we've seen them progress so much over this past year, uh, or excuse me, this past season. We've just seen them really strive, and I, I was talking to the players. They said they watch a lot of streams from the, the North American players and try and uh, either mimic what they do or kind of evolve how they play a game type. So uh, just that right there, I mean, that shows a lot of initiative that they're taking to, to learn what these teams here over in the States are doing, and that'll, that'll allow them to counter a lot of things. So of I believe that if, if, they, if they did that with Cloud9, which I assume they would. Uh, well, you'd hope so. Dude, you'd hope so. It's very difficult, yeah. though, for those for those who haven't uh, had to play anybody internationally. I'm sure some of you have. You've run an arena game. You've come across a guy with EU in his game of tag or NZ in his game of tag. And you're like, well, where's this guy from? And it's it's difficult to practice across, you know, across the planet. You know, let's yeah. face it. Um, so it's been really interesting to see if these guys can come and, and immediately, you know, match the same play styles that they've been watching because it's very different when you practice in theory you know you're looking at these guys on streams and you're like oh okay cool i know how to play this map i've seen the way this guy plays or yeah they play at a kind of similar pace to we do it's actually completely different and when you get here in the flesh and you see the screens and you're on a level playing field together it's a totally different game so it'll be interesting to see if epsilon can come out of the gates adapt to this new play style of c9s because they don't really have much of a choice yeah, they don't. I mean, this is a very big match in this pool. I mean, going to game five or, and losing, at least you get two wins. And then you have to hope the other team loses to one of the other, uh, to, to Skyfire. Um, I mean, or loses more matches to CLG and doesn't win any. Uh, so it, it really comes down to, to games one here when it comes into pool play. And if there are two teams tied, uh, the tiebreaker would go into how that team matched up against each other. So that's... I mean, there's so much kind of stuff going behind the scenes as well. It's uh, not just about this game or this series. It's no. about the entire group and how exactly. each, each team plays against one another in this group. It really is going to impact who makes it out of here alive. Now, of course, Mike, not everyone is going to make it out of the groups. You know, no. someone's going to be going home in a body bag. And in, frankly, it's going to be two teams in each pool, in each group, rather. However, 
We'll have to wait and see how that one plays out. I don't want to make any judgment calls. I don't want to make any crazy wild predictions, uh, apart from the fact that CLG is going to make it out first, because let's kind of face it, it's going to happen, right? It's probably going to happen. I think if, if you're betting against them right now, you're insane. But frankly. to at least be here, I mean, if I was a competitor, even if I was the 16th seed, I would be so stoked and so pumped to walk into this venue and just be like, I've made it. I've made it, dude. I I've have made, made it, it here. I've made it. Speaking of making it, we're having a bit of a, a bit of a technical issue getting this game one underway. So what we're going to do, Mike, we're going to throw to a real quick break. We're going to powder our noses, apply some chapsticks, and uh, we'll be right back with you guys in just a moment. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back soon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Halo World Championships 2016. You're, you're on board with Wrath, the strong side, and ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to kick off our game one. This is Cloud9 versus Epsilon Esports. It's the first game of the day, and holy moly, could it be one of the biggest. We are just about ready to get this game underway. There, of course, you can see on your screen, both teams getting their stuff together. This looks like it could be us almost in board with the game. Hey, that looks like some Halo. Let's rock and roll with this one. Mike, how excited are you about this game? Because I am literally flying out my seat. Not as high flying as that sniper rifle was for Dan Oxide. Yeah, that sniper move right there, just doing the, the combat evolve to start the game. These guys are definitely practiced up uh, for this tournament. Denox, excuse me, we are watching uh, Denoxide right now. Hysteria is in the camera feed, so sorry for the confusion on that. Uh, right now, Denoxide just taken down. Buck 20 still has the sniper in hand, trying to stay alive right now, uh, doing a good job at that. Teammates around, but not able to push into the base. They're going to just try to get control of the sniper side of the map, and that's what we're going to see players kind of moving back and forth uh, throughout the game, uh, trying to get control here and uh, be able to run the flag over to the snipe side. Nice stuff there. I want to jump on board with Cloud and see how he's doing there. Now we see him moving around bottom middle now. We've got a nice exchange at the beginning there, Mike. Although we did see a man called Dunoxide picking up that sniper rifle, he didn't seem to do too much with it for his team. Regardless, nice stuff from him. Uh, again, look at this exchange now. Jimbo, nice bit of a dodge and a duck and a weave there. He and his teammates are going to bring Cloud down in their base. However, it looks like there's a couple more members up top here. Let's try to jump on board with another player of Cloud9. I'm just going to jump on board with who have we got to go for. Actually, you know what? Let's stay on top of this one. That was a nice perfect kill. That flag looked like it is on the move. They're going to get that return. It looks like they probably will get that one back. And a nice bit of a DMR grab as well. Why not? Cloud doing a high level of work for his team early on right now. Mike, early predictions for me, it's kind of neck and neck. Neither team can do too much to gain control. Nice grenades there, catching Buck 20 off of spawn there. Looks like Cloud's going to be pushing in. There's a lot of pressure on his base. It doesn't look too good for them. This is a nice pinch. Looks like a lot of team members have got shields down now. This could be a pull now for Cloud9, and it definitely will. They're going to get that one moving now. Jimbo's doing what he can to keep Big that one alive. Good kill. kill. Great kill. We got the key to bring him down there. Looks like Cleet was the only member left in that base. Oh, it looks like Hysteria is also there. That return may not happen for Epsilon, dude, but it looks like things are moving for them. Let's see what Hysteria can do here. He's definitely going to try and keep the pressure on, Ep on Epsilon's base, but it looks like they're going to manage to pull that one back. Snipe in the hands of Assault. He's going to be doing everything he can, but he doesn't make those no-scopes. And the Snipe Drone is going to keep him pressured and keep him out of his base. This is great stuff from both teams early on in this game, Mike. Oh, I'd like to see a bit of rocket control there, but unfortunately Assault is going to be taken down. Uh, let's see if we have anybody else running around right now. Sniper Drone looks like he's, uh, he's actually doing a bit of pr like pressure work, keeping the, the opponents away from his base right now. You see Dan Oxide, man called Dan Oxide, taken down by 57. We like to see that. Nice shots there from Snipe Drone, taking on a his flying hysteria. Uh, and look, it seems like Epsilon have managed to get out of their base. They managed to survive that initial trap and do their best to keep this one moving. Uh, keep themselves, sorry, uh, prevent that flag run from happening. So, Mike, pretty good stuff early on from the guys in blue. Yeah, yeah, and there you see we've got Snipe Drone in the player cam right there, really controlling the sniper area. Right as I say that, he's taken down Cast Curse of the Caster. Let's hop on board with Hysteria, uh, who's going to be hanging out over by the snipe side of the map. And yes, the player cam is now, yes, now it is Hysteria. But yes, he's got the scatter shot, trying to take down Jimbo. Jimbo getting some excellent shots, but Hysteria getting some help from his teammate Cloud. You're going to see Cloud9 taking down three players from Epsilon. This is a big time to get a flag run. All four members of Epsilon are down. You're going to see all these players uh, trap, trap the spawns over at the elbow, and that's what you see Hysteria doing and looking at the spawns. He's going to get the scatter kill. The flag is still being moved across the map. I want to say, uh, was it Denoxide still? Let's hop on board with Denoxide, who's moving the flag. Now, actually, so he actually passed it off. The flag is still sitting there. Uh, they're going to be trying to get the return, not able to get it. Cloud gets the touch, hop on board with Cloud, who is trying to move the flag in. And no, what a turn of events. Epsilon is able to get the return. Oh huge. my gosh, wow, huge play from Epsilon. 
in their entire squad. They had all four players down. It looked like there was nothing they could do. Cloud9 had pretty much solidified the cap, but they snuck back into the base and stopped the cap. Nice stuff there, man. Cool. Dinoxide now being brought down. It looks like Flag is away. Epsilon has managed to get that one across the map. It looks like he's just past the halfway mark. We will be running with that one again. What can Dinoxide do to bring this down for his team? He needs to stop that runner. He's almost across the way. Jimbo is going to be caught. He's a buck 20. He's going to be caught in his base. Dinoxide is not clean up this kill. Nice damage from 20 there. He managed to do a lot of hits before being brought down. And it looks like that capture is on the, on the board now. So Epsilon have drawn first blood in this game. That is some exciting stuff. I did not expect that this early on, Mike. So well done to Epsilon. And it looks as though Dinoxide is still going to be... Look at the pressure now coming from Epsilon. They are not relenting right now. They're, they're, they're continuing the moment from that first cap. And although we're on board now with Assault, who does seem to have rockets, uh, but he's going to be brought down quickly. The curse of the caster is indeed in effect today. This is something that we cannot really control. Uh, on board with now Hysteria, who's rocking that lime green pistol. Big fan of that one. He's going to be going one-on-one -on -one with Sniper in our bottom middle. Now, Mike, look at this relentless pressure from Epsilon. They have not stopped. And now, look, another flag is on the move. And although they managed to get the shots there, and good job getting the kill, but it looks like Epsilon are absolutely playing on the tips of their toes. Relentless aggression. And although Hysteria seems to have had full control... Oh, baby, nice splinter the grenade. That's what we like to see in game one of the World Champs. Cloud has rockets. What can he do here? Almost gets a direct hit, but he's going to miss that one. And he's not going to get the second as well. And 20 is going to be still alive. Can he bring him down? No. Snipe drone. Epsilon will prevail and bring down Cloud. That was an impressive set of plays there. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that Cloud missed those rockets, Mike. Yeah, Epsilon's doing a great job at just really putting the pressure back at Cloud9. Uh, we saw Cloud9 really putting a lot of pressure at the, at the start of the match, and they just battled back and forth between the snipe side. Uh, and we haven't seen too much really power weapon uh, controlled that, that changes the turn of events here in the match. Uh, normally we're seeing a lot more like sitting back with a sniper, uh, rockets just pushing forward. Earlier we saw a site, uh, assault die with rockets in his cave. Uh, so very, very odd kind of play from uh, from Cloud9 on, on trying to, to move into the other base and Epsilon really capitalizing uh, on, on their flaw right now. Let's hop on board with Assault though, who is moving the flag and he's gonna get rocketed and taken down by Snipe Drone. So let's hop on board with him. Snipe Drone picking up the triple. He's going for the over. He does not get it. He is taken down. Let's hop on board with Jimbo, who is moving forward to pick up those rockets. Just barely misses them. He's gonna get into a fight with the Noxide. Jimbo with the beautiful shots. Jimbo, people always say Jimbo has incredible shots. He's got the best shot on Epsilon. I would have to agree. Every time I've seen this guy get into a one on one, he is always winning his 1v1 fights. So look at the relentless aggression. Jimbo, he's going to be shutting down that push. He's managed to get almost two kills there. Great job from Jimbo there. It looks like his team are going to be doing what they can to push out of the base. I love this position on Snipe's side. Look at Cloud. He is in a bad part of town right now, surrounded by members of Epsilon. He's going to be almost taken down. But again, Jimbo, look at that shot through the crack between the rocks. And now going 1v1 with Assault. He's going to get the trade for the double. I like that play from Jimbo. He's still doing the damage. He's still getting the kills. And look at his teammates. They're doing everything they can to push up. It looks like 20 is in the base on his own. I want to stay on board with Jimbo because he's having a scream right now. Look at that thrust used to get up to top middle. He's going to 1v1 with Cloud. He's going to get the perfect kill there. Every Out time, Miles. Every, Every time. Every time. Jimbo is not missing now. He's he's had the Halo World Champs, and he is absolutely ready to play. And it looks like Epsilon have got their second flag on the move. This looks like it could be a cap. However, no, it looks like the flag runner is still moving. 57. Oh, he's just been taken down. But it looks like the flag is still alive. There is no returns yet. Nice shots from Jimbo. Oh, he manages to almost get that perfect cross map. That would have been something real special. Oh, this but he chokes the, the clamber. clamber. Oh, dude. There's a sniper rifle up there with that flag. That is like the honey pot. It looks like they're still moving, but that unfortunate play has now put them in a very difficult position. There is a, there are sitting ducks against the guns of Cloud9 who are going to get the hits there. Nice job, though, by Epsilon. This flag run is still happening, Mike. This is unprecedented. This could be a second cap for Epsilon Esports. Game one. Could it be a 3-0 sweep in game one? Mike, this is incredible. Yeah, honestly, it could. These guys are definitely playing like they are at X Games. They've definitely studied Cloud9. You see how well they rallied the flag back the entire way. Yeah, there was a little bit of a mishap with Jimbo missing that clamber, but Jimbo was on a slain spree at their base as the Bucks slowly moved the flag back. And then we saw Snipe Drone jump up to the bridge and rally the flag back. But now, as we're saying this, Hysteria is running the flag in. Looks like he's completely untouched. All players from Epsilon are back on their side. He's going to go in with almost no damage taken. And actually, he is taken down right as he caps the flag. Two to one now. Cloud9 does not want to lose game number one.
they do not want to lose it. It looks like they managed to pull a second flag, but I, yeah, it is, it is actually moving button now. Let's jump on board with Cloud, who is running that flag. I want to see how he manages to stay alive. He's going to be engaging with Snipe Drone, who's going to get the kill on him. Now, look at this. They have managed to rally back, but there is a battle for bottom middle now. That flag is very much in contention. Let's see what Hysteria is up to, because he is trying to keep that flag alive for his team, and he is going to be brought down. Scrappy plays happening bottom mid. The only person left alive, I believe, for, uh, for C9 right now is Assault. He's going to have to do what he can to keep that flag alive. Bottom middle on the halfway mark. They do not want to let this one go, but it looks like they're going to let it concede to Epsilon. You know what, Mike? I think that's a good thing. I yeah. think that's a good play. Yeah, Assault knew that he could not get it, so he's just he's thinking, I need to stay alive. If I go out there and force something, I'm going to die. There's no need for me to, to, to over-pursue that uh, when there's no chance I'm going to get that. It's better to be alive and to, to, to be a nuisance inside uh, the enemy's base rather than just to be another X on the scoreboard. Let's have a look above 57. He seems to be, oh, he's just been taken down. I do not want to jump over to him. Let's stay on board with Assault. I was seeing a couple of 1v1 battles there that Epsilon Esports found themselves in that they really shouldn't have been. Their team shot and their aggressive, aggressive play has been very, very good so far. Let's on jump aboard with a man named Anoxide. He's going to be going up 1v1 against Snipe Drone. There's a lot of fire happening, and it looks like those rockets will fall into the hands of Cloud9. This is very important for them. Oh, he kills him on the spot. He isn't going to get those. They're still up on the perch. It looks like, uh, I'm not sure who got the kill there, but it seems to be rockets are still down in play unless snipe drone can get up there and grab them and this is huge for epsilon this could be that final cap this looks like a nice run of play there jimbo and snipe drone now moving in through snipe side rockets in hand this could be exactly what they need to get that third flag cap now there seems to be a slight slow a uh, slight halt in their plans as they're, they're dealing with the spawners now and there seems to be a member of c9 nice rocket from jimbo oh uh, from snipe drone excuse me getting excited for no reason and there is the double kill with the rockets that's what we like to see out of a man using rockets can he get the triple return no he will not and that is going to slow him down mike that's really crucial for now well played by c9 yeah that was a big play by assault right there who now has rockets. Actually, he is taken down, but that was a really big play by Assault to, to sneak up behind Snipe Drone. If he was taken down, that would have been three down for C9, and they would have not been able to, to stop that flag cap. But the side running in flag cap number two. Can they tie the game up? It looks like he's got protection from all sides of the map. And yes, he is going to tie the game up. Two to two. We are down to 45 seconds. If this does go into overtime, we are going to add three additional minutes to the game and will be the first cap to win. Dude, I cannot believe this is game one of, of our group, the Halo World Champs 2016. What a game we're seeing. There is 30 seconds left on the clock. Cloud9 have just pushed in to blue side of the base. It looks like there's a really Relentless aggression from them. However, Dinoxide is going to be caught out of position and taken down by two members of Epsilon Esports. Look at this now. Cloud is doing everything he can to stay alive. He needs to keep position now. It looks like overtime will be achieved. Again, Mike, that's three minutes. Next cap will win. Jimbo with no shield managing to stay alive there. No, he does not. Excuse me. He's brought down. We are definitely going to be hitting overtime. Let's see what these teams can do at this stage. This is absolutely unprecedented, Mike. Epsilon Everyone on Epsilon is dead right now. I was trying to switch to some uh, a player on Epsilon, but Cloud9 is just putting so much pressure on Epsilon. They cannot even get out of their base right now. Assault putting more pressure on from the snipe side of the map, keeping Jimbo at bay. You see the Bucks sitting back on their flag. Snipe Drone is still on the flag as well. Cloud9, they have a perfect opportunity right here to pick up a kill or two and then slowly move in. You see them take two players down, Snipe Drone and Buck, and the third Buck. And now we're going to see all four players down from Epsilon. This is the prime time to make a flag move. You see Assault, he let two players slip out out. Unfortunately, they are going to possibly stop the flag runner. Yes, they do. Taking down Cloud right now. Assault, big kills here. If he can pick up one of these or just stay alive, even bigger play. Epsilon gets the flag return. Incredible play again by Epsilon. We've seen them made two big flag returns here in this game, Miles. That's huge flag return. I would love to jump on board with Buck20 and see what he's doing. He's pushing now into Cloud9's base, doing what he can to, to just immense pressure right now. I cannot believe they managed to get that return, Mike. That was absolutely huge. There is only two minutes left of overtime. Jimbo, 1v1 against Assault. He's going to get the upper hand there with that sure you can on the outside of the fridge steps. And now, look, Hysteria under pressure from Jimbo. He's going to get, no, he's not going to get the kill, but great damage there. Incoming pressure now from Snipe side. Hysteria caught off guard, but no, the Hysteria aim will prevail. He has shown up on land, ladies and gentlemen. One minute, 35 seconds left in overtime. I think we should go into a Cloud9 listen in and see what these guys are doing in these final moments of this game. Uh, 
Incredible stuff there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It looks like Epsilon Esports have moved that flag. However, C9's defensive play right now is absolutely on point. They managed to do a huge amount of damage. And, oh, Jimbo managed to stick himself there. That was unfortunate for him. There is 45 seconds remaining. Buck 20 is now moving the flag across the map. He has been spotted. But, however, his flag is in his base. Can he stay alive? No, he will not. C9 will be bringing him down. There is Jimbo doing what he can. He's not going to get the double, but Snipe Drone is going to get that double kill. Where is the flag now? It looks like a man named Anoxide has pulled that flag. He's now going to out across map. Snipe Drone in, in a great position to do damage they're going to bring that flag carrier down mike this is incredible stuff 20 seconds remaining e uh it's like epsilon are going to get that return but both flags are now back at the base and where do we go from here yeah if this game ends right now or excuse me if this game ends tied we are going to go of a full replay of the entire game type so it looks like no team is even getting a flag touch right now it looks like it's going to count down three two one, and that's going to be the game, Miles. We're going to see an entire replay of game number one. Incredible comeback from Cloud9. We saw Epsilon just so strong at the beginning of the game, but then Epsilon really kind of turtled back into their base. We saw so much pressure from Cloud9, keeping Epsilon at bay. But every time they got four down for Epsilon to move that flag, they could not capitalize and get the flag cap. Those are mistakes you cannot have happen here at the Halo World Championship. You get all four players down, you start moving that flag. That should be a guaranteed flag cap, especially if you have rockets. There is no questions about it. Epsilon was able to slip by, stop two major flag caps that could have lost them the game and just making some huge plays. Huge plays. I cannot believe that back and forth between those two teams, and again, as you said, Epsilon had, they had a 2-0 lead at the beginning of that game, and they let it slowly but surely slip away as C9 found themselves on that map. I feel like now C9 could almost ride that momentum off of those two flag caps that they managed to get at the end straight into this next game. But again, seeing how, how aggressively and how well Epsilon played the start of that match. Again, it was a little bit back and forth at the very, very beginning, but they had to, uh, they had seemed to have a much better grasp of control, um, especially towards the, uh, towards the beginning of that first cap. It's quite general too there but yeah. it, towards the beginning of that first cap they just had so much energy and so much momentum and they couldn't be stopped but if they if they take that initiative away for just a second c9 comes straight in and they get straight into their base and you saw that perfect four man down for epsilon c9 pulled it hysteria got it all the way to his base but you notice that one member of epsilon came in and managed to get the kill with him pretty much on the spot he got the capture but letting that player get inside that is really what's hurting them right now and that's why we're not seeing a more dominant display from c9 so pretty much the tournament hasn't started yet for these teams. No. We're back. We're still at game one. Game, that, that last game didn't really count. It was a good, nice warm-up game for them. It's game 1.5, right? It's game 1.5. Something that nobody expected, but damn, am I happy to be seeing another game like this. I know. We were just talking about how we want to see game fives, game sevens, down to the wire games. I mean, that's what we just saw. Overtime, down to the wire. It looked like Epsilon had that at the very end, too. You saw Buck kind of flustered. He was looking around, he saw two guys on his radar. He wasn't sure exactly where to go, but he, instincts told him just to push forward. And he, he, he didn't have any teammates that were alive to help him. There was really not too much he could do. And then that's when we saw Cloud9 get the return. But man, I mean, these players, I, I'm impressed with the Bucks, really making the, the objective move for their squad. Jimbo, every time we're on that guy's screen, he is hitting five shots. He is just out shooting every player. Every time. Backing down. And that's, you know, I really like that from Jimbo. He, he doesn't overcommit in fights. If he's down, he knows it. He knows that he's not going to challenge. Uh, but we'll see. We saw him make a move on Hysteria. He had some little mind games going on. You have those nice. 1v1 mind games going on when you're playing at this high of a level. Uh, people will think that you're going to back down and not come out because it's kind of uh, an uncharacteristic play, but sometimes almost making that uncharacteristic or making that b bad play is the right play because it's not expected. It it's throws so the other bad guy off. Yeah. that they don't expect it. And we, we see that type of gameplay from Jimbo. He's just... He's on that top tier level with all these top players here at, here at the Halo World Championship and his individual skill is there, his teamwork is there, and we are going to see a lot more of Jimbo here in this next game. I think we are almost ready to jump back into Capture the Flag on Coliseum. Game 1.5, we're getting a replay because they tied it up at two all in the first match. For those of you that missed it, it was something real special. Let's dive on board with Denoxide and see if he, he's going to run this. Uh, it looks like he's going to run the combat involved 
again, which I like to see, but I wonder if he's going to uh, see a bit of a counterplay there. We're going to see what Jimbo can do with these rockets, and it looks like he's going to do sweet nothing with them. He's going to be taken out quite early on there. Uh, but however, Hysteria does have them, and he's running bottom middle now. Do like to see this. Now, this is a nice change, because it looks like uh, Sniper was in the hands of Denoxide. He still actually has control of the Sniper rifle, but he's been brought down, as you can see, in the kill feed on the left-hand side. Hysteria playing a little quiet here with his rockets, but he's going to pay off as he makes a big noise there, getting that kill on Sniper Drone. And there's a nice double on 57. Can he get the triple on Jimbo? 1v1, and he's backing down. He backs he down. He backed down. He knows Dude. Jimbo is just too strong in Not the Jimbo. Not the Jimbo. However, he's going to go back in with his teammates, and I like to see the C9 relentless aggression here. Look at this now. Flag now being moved from the members of C9. There looks like three dead for Epsilon. Nice predictive rocket. Aware of the spawns, he is going to get the damage there. And there we see Jimbo brought down. This looks like a perfect cap for C9. Denoxide's bringing that one in. You see the huge damage now from Hysteria. And that is going to be the flag almost capped. All he's going to do is run in the spot now. Nice stuff there from Denoxide. Oh, a nice headshot there on Jimbo. Stealth cap too. We are seeing a completely different Cloud9 at the start of this match. We saw a very slow Cloud9 starting last game. They're completely in sync this match. Denoxide with the sniper trying to get the kill. He is just flustered going back and forth. Snipe Drone is going to get the reversal here and turn that around. And Denoxide is going to lose the sniper. Let's hop on board now with Jimbo, who's pushing up as well. Looks like they're going to be moving in to get a flag grab. If they can pick up a couple kills here, not able to, to get all the kills. A few players taken down on Epsilon. So they're going to kind of hang back here. Good play by Jimbo. Waiting for his teammates to spawn up and push. Going to help out. Try and get the kill on Hysteria. Hysteria making some big moves on Jimbo. We were just saying how Jimbo was individually just so skilled here in these, uh, in starting in this series. And Hysteria to make a play like that is absolutely huge. He was not afraid anymore. And look at this now. Defensive play from Epsilon. Looks like that one member of C9 on the base. Denoxide is going to be brought down. Uh, I want to see what Cloud's doing with this sniper rifle because we've seen some nice snipes already outside of Denoxide. Tiny bit of a wimble. A Jimbo. 1v1. Is he going to get the kill? Oh my he goodness. Does. He gets the kill. The crouch strafe. Oh, Jimbo. Making dreams come true on the, on the side and, stage and here. And dreams as well. <laughs> oh, big and dreams. you got to dream big. And look at this now, aggression from Jimbo, but it seems to be he got a little bit too big for his boots there. He's going to be brought down. Cloud ran out of bullets. I'm not going to say it was a choke, but boy, it was exciting to watch. Look at this aggression now, 57, getting the nice double, perfect kill there. But look, one member of C9 has rockets, um, and it looks like we're going to have to jump on with Assault now. Big man Assault, he's going to be carrying those rockets to do some heavy lifting for his team. He's going to get brought down, and I don't mind that trade too much. Cloud snipe now. He's going to miss a sitter on that player. That was very unfortunate for him. He's still uh, doing what they can to, to keep the Epsilon on wave back. They're crashing like rocks against C9 right now. But look at this. That's a hysteria brought down. That is going to be... I'm not sure why Cloud pushed out there. He knew there was a member coming from Snipe. Three guys from Epsilon Esports now making the charge. Snipe Drone with Snipe Rifle. This is definitely not what they want to see. There is going to be some serious damage coming out now. It looks like Snipe Drone was going for a ground pound there. But Mike, what can a C9 do right now? Yeah, C9 just had three players down. They, they were allowing Epsilon to just really capitalize on uh, their spawn trap here. And you see everyone on Cloud9 just trying to push out. Looks like they're going to get that flag return. Snipe Drone just staying alive here, uh, just doing damage. Honestly, this is, so when we talk about being at the Snipe side of the map, being at the Snipe side of the map is so important because you have such good lines of sight across the map. You have the, the height advantage, like right here, for example. Jimbo with the height advantage, he's going to have to reload, but He's able to wait for a teammate to pick up the kill. And that's what, uh, to talk about that as well, playing at this high of a level, we're talking about how Jimbo is individually just so skilled. It comes down to teamwork. Once you're in this top tier level, it's uh, it's about backing down when you need to back down and wait for that teammate, teammate to come help you. Or just waiting to push up and work with a teammate to make a charge towards the flag. But let's hop on board with Denoxide, who's now pushing up with Rockets. Is he going to be able to pick up a kill? Yes, he does pick up the kill on Jimbo. Now we have Cloud9 pushing into Epsilon's base. We've seen this happen many times before. They get all four down. Actually, Assault is taken down, so they're down a man. Uh, two players down on Epsilon. This could be the chance. It's not actually going to be the chance uh, that they were looking for Denoxide taken down to stop that flag run. Possibly a miscommunication there. You saw Denoxide to and fro between that elbow spawn and the guys in cave. And it was unfortunate that he chose wrong when he crossed that street and he would be hit by a sniper. And then, oh, Jimbo out of nowhere. Where did he come from? He managed to get the assassination there. Was there not a radar in play? I don't understand what just happened. And look at this aggression now from Epsilon. Oh, sorry, excuse me. That looks like a wrong base. Uh, it looks like C9's flag is out, but 20 was killed. There was a little bit, like, they were spread a little too thin there. Epsilon 
one couldn't really do too much. Um, we're gonna jump on board with Cloud and see what he's doing right now. I'm pretty sure to see. Oh, here we go. No, he's gonna be pushing in his face. Excuse me while he's brought it down. That is definitely the curse of the caster. Uh, <laughs> and we see Denoxide now, scatter shot in hand. This is a very big push. A, uh, like, oh, huge plays now. Buck 20 is going to be cleaned up there. And there is another man on his radar. Can Jimbo be brought down? That is a big stick. That is a very annoying play. Good stuff there from Denoxide. He's going to be pushing it now. Pressure is on. It looks like his teammates are being taken out slowly by Epsilon. Uh, but he's still alive there. And that's very, very important for him. Staying alive again at this level is something that we always say. But maintaining your... Sort of having having a respect for your Spartan's life is really important. And wow, Buck 20 coming out of nowhere with a big right hook in the face just before hitting the deck there. Yeah, it really seems like they're just slaying each other back and forth. They're not able to, to capitalize on getting a few players down and initiating the flag run. It seems like Cloud9 almost needs all four down to, to, to initiate that flag run. They haven't got the opportunity. We see Rockets are up. Snipe Drone looks, or excuse me, Snipe Drone looks like he's going to make his way over there as he gets some support up from top bridge, uh, checking his uh, red elbow here, but not going to be able to win that 1v1. He's taken down. Rockets are still up, but Jimbo in hand with the sniper. Let's see what Jimbo's going to be able to do here. Doesn't spot the player that spawns over to the left. Not going to be able to pick up a kill. It looks like Cloud9 does have Rockets. Epsilon with the sniper. Let's see what both players can make happen here. Jimbo picking up a no scope. Is he going to be able to finish the kill? No, he's not going to be able to, but he sneaks away. Beautiful play by Jimbo, staying alive. Picks up another body shot, no scope. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, we're on Jimbo. I'm not sure what everyone else was doing, trying to push up, because we saw Cloud9 initiate a flag run. We saw Jimbo fighting two or three players. Uh, his teammates, uh, the Bucks, they really need to, to step up and, uh, like you said, play a little bit more selfish. Don't overextend and do something that's going to get them killed. Let's jump on board with Buck20 and have a look at those Bucks and just see what they're bringing to this game. 20 now, he's in the enemy base right now and he's doing a little bit of a sneaky work there on the, on the top mid uh, position there of his base. Shots on with Assault, he's going to go 1v1 with him. He is alone by now, but it seems like he's going to get the flagpole, which I like to see, and there is a bit of help, but he's again, kind of put himself in strange positions. I'm not quite sure what's going on with Epsilon right now. They seem so strong at the beginning of this game, but they're slowly but surely falling apart at the threads. A nice job from Jimbo there, 1v1 with Hysteria, is going to get that kill. Uh, and again, it looks like Epsilon have a slight upper hand at the moment. Jimbo now frantically trying to stay alive top mid, but Assault is not going to have any of his tricks or tomfoolery, and he's going to be keeping that one going. And again, it seems that Epsilon are falling apart slowly, Mike. They had such a great team shot, and they were really in strong positions to... Oh, and that was a stick. No, it wasn't. I thought that was. My heart was in my mouth. I, was, I would have cried for Snipe Drone there. Going back to what I was saying just about Epsilon's positioning, they seem to be in great positions to get each other's kills and to help each other out. And it looks like we have a, a, a sort of a resurgence of that playstyle now. But C9 are just having such a good run of things right now, doing huge, huge damage for them. Let's have a look at a member of C9 and see see what's going on on the red side of things. Yeah, we're, we're not really, like we were saying, we're not seeing too many flag grabs. Uh, it's basically uh, these players need to, to get a few down and initiate a flag run. They haven't been able to initiate a flag run. Uh, it's like they're playing Team Slayer almost. We're just seeing them go back and forth, but that's how evenly skilled these two teams are. They just go back and forth. Epsilon does have about three minutes, a little over three minutes to try and rally back and tie this game up. Hysteria taken down, big kill by Snipe Drone as he's taken down as well. Uh, assault in hand with Rockets, Cloud with the DMR. Let's actually, let's hop on board with Buck20 here, uh, who's back at his base. So Epsilon just still back at their base. Uh, it's been back and forth over here at the Sniper and taken down again. I know it's, it's just back and forth the entire time. But back on board with Hysteria. Who's got a Sniper? Who's pushing in? They've got a flag run. I think it's Cloud in hand with the flag, making the moves. They've got the flag in the courtyard. Hysteria trying to pick up a kill here. Picking up a kill or two here is going to be huge and could solidify cap number two. Jimbo is taken down. Cloud is taken down. No one able to get the flag here. They're going for the return, but 20 gets the return, and now they're running the flag. Oh, wow, it's Hysteria just missing that snipe. I was enjoying watching this for a while, but now it looks like, oh, Snipe Drone's gonna be quite a position. They needed to kill Hysteria faster than that. Now, it does look good for Epsilon right now. They are gonna have that snipe. Let's see what they can do, if they can get themselves into a stronger position now with that snipe rifle, and uh, see what if they can make some use of it. I'd like to jump on board with a player that has that snipe, but I'm pretty sure he just died. Now, again, two minutes remaining. This is do or die for Epsilon. They absolutely have to get another flag on the board, and then preferably get another one, or at least see Cloud 
Cloud9 get another cap because otherwise we will be seeing another overtime and potentially another replay of Coliseum CTF, Mike. Yeah, the big thing that's happening right now, Rockets are coming up. This could be a big playmaker to cap the flag. Now we see Hysteria blocking the cave spawns, putting shots on elbow, and the flag is getting ran. But two players taken down from Cloud or Cloud9. They're not going to be able to get this, and Hysteria is going to be taken down. Uh, they're just not on, uh, they're not able to, to get the flag out the front. They keep going bridge. Uh, they, Hysteria is blocking cave. Cloud9 should just run the flag over to the cave. They're, they're trying to force it out the front where they're so exposed when they're running the flag. If they were to just take a cave, they've got the, the, the protection here and they can make that happen. Oh, wow. What an incredible triple kill there from Hysteria. He managed to get the rockets and he managed to get the return as well. This is huge for his team, but he's still in the enemy base. He's still raining hell upon Epsilon Esports. Could it be a double? No, he didn't even get a hit marker there, but the damage is already done and it looks like Dinoxide has got that flag halfway. Let's see what he does with this. It looks like this could be cap number two for them. However, it looks like Epsilon have managed to pull that flag. It is going out rocket side now. Shots on. Damage for Dinoxide. There comes Jimbo. Jimbo brought down from Cloud. This looks like it could be cap number two. This is absolutely huge, Mike. One minute remaining. Flag is away. It is still on the move. What can Buck20 do? He's doing damage, but it looks Assault is behind him. Where is the return? It looks like it's on its way. Over 50%. And there is cap number two. It looks like C9 may have just sealed the deal for game number 1.5. Did you notice, Miles? C9 ran that flag towards the cave that time. They had the help from Hysteria, who had rockets over by the cave, seconds. killing players over by the fountain. We saw Dinoxide just perfectly run that flag. He didn't go untouched, but he had a lot more cover going towards the cave side, over to the sniper, and making it his way back into the base. But we're going to have 15 seconds left on the clock. Absolutely impossible right now for Epsilon to come back. Cloud9 looks to be like they're even going for the third cap here. They're probably, excuse me, they are going to take game number one in a big turn of events in the this, uh, the first rate replay of this game. I cannot talk right now, but game number one goes to Cloud9. We wow. saw Epsilon come in very strong in game number one, and then Cloud9 just turned things around in game number two. Mike, what a game. We've just begun. We've only just begun and things are already this exciting, incredible stuff there. C9 managing to come out a whole new team in that second game. They were a completely different lineup. And there you can see on your screen the Bucks and their anxious uh, colleagues from the UK behind them. You see Infused cheering them on. Wow, there is an incredible crowd gathered around the, uh, the players here on the side stage. Insane gameplay happening right now. Mike, this is already, the drama is already unfolding for these teams here, on the, uh, here at the Halo World Championship 2016. Well, hey. Incredible stuff, dude. Incredible big, stuff. Big stuff to start the tournament. I mean, honestly, going going into an overtime, then having to replay, and then Cloud9 just turning their, their game around and really coming in strong. But let's take a look at the stats here. A lot of big stats. We see Denoxide 26. We saw Assault with 28, Cloud 27, and Hysteria 26. A lot of big numbers. A lot of outslaying happened from the Cloud9 side. Yeah, you uh, Epsilon almost doubled. You could see the, num the number of assists. There was at least two members of Cloud9 in that had over 20 assists. That just goes to show, I mean, the, the outslaying was, it was kind of a given at that stage. You could tell that uh, Epsilon were definitely not the same team that they were in that first uh, iteration of, of Coliseum capture the flag. But it, it definitely showed in the assists and on the scoreboard there, amazing, amazing stuff from Cloud9. However, Mike, this is a best of five. And I don't think we can ask for anything better because up next we have Rig TS. Now, dude, where do we go from Rig TS? So, I've seen Epsilon play Rig TS. This is honestly, I think, their best game type. We've seen Snipe Drone, just he huddles back into the corner, gets the sniper, he puts up the protection wall made of Bucks and Jimbo, and he just takes faces. And if they can do that, like we've seen at EMEA Regionals, as we saw at Gfinity, as we saw at all these, uh, these past events, if they can do what they did, I think they're going to be flying through this game and really put Cloud9 uh, kind of at a curious state. They're not going to know what to do, and they're going to tie this series up 1-1. I said Epsilon is winning this series. They came in strong. Come on, Epsilon. Turn this game around. Who cares about game number one? You know what? It's in the past. When you're at a tournament like this, you just leave that behind. You lose, don't even talk about what you guys did wrong in that game type, you should be talking about what you need to be doing right in the next game type that you're playing. you got to move on, Mike. I mean, what do these guys need to do? They need to shake it off, right? They've got to sh sh shake it off, you know, because the haters are going to hate. But these players, they're going to play, and they need to shake it off 
because that's that's pretty much all they've got right now. Anyway, on board. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> we love Taylor Swift here on the side stage. That's a fact, ladies and gentlemen. There we see the bucks in our cameras, and uh, everyone's looking pretty chilled out. I mean, no one looks scared yet. No one looks afraid. No one looks like this is the end of the road. Again, this is only the first game, but this is a very, very important game for this group. You can see Sniper in there pondering. Pondering the existence of his sniper rifle in the next map. Pondering how many kills he's going to he, get. He's like, man, what am I going to do with that sniper rifle? Ooh. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take that oh, face. Yeah, I'm like going to take this face off. I'm going to peel that face off. I'm going to rip that skull off. He's just, he's yeah, just think, he's Jim, thinking it, it, exactly what he's going to do to hey, Cloud9. Uh, Jim, you're gonna, you can be a better cover, eh, Jim? You're going to cover me, sort me out? I don't know what, <laughs> what Snipe Drone sounds like. I think that's what he sounds like. We had a big hug and a shake just a moment ago. Of course, there is a man named Denoxide, a.k.a. Denoxide. And uh, you see a sort on your screen. There is Cloud to the left, rocking the Cloud9 hat. I've always found it kind of unusual how a member of uh, the, the, the sort of the team, the team player of the team org of Cloud9 are going to have. Yeah. They see a sort, of course, of sort, uh, a staple of, uh, of, of Halo 5 Safari. He's been pretty good right now. And Jimbo, oh, sorry, that's Snipe Drone. He's still pondering. He's still just, what's going on in that head? What's he thinking about, man? Is he thinking about snipes? Is he thinking about lunch? He's what got did he have for breakfast? He has the hand warmers too. It is a little oh. bit chilly in here. It's actually warmed up now that the, the entire stadium here is pretty much filled up. It's pretty filled right now. I mean, and there's a huge crowd huddled around these players. Everyone is extremely excited to see the result of this game. Of course, Snipe Drone. The sort of is a philosopher right there, sitting uh, sitting up atop his uh, his sort of his rock, <laughs> and we. I think we need to focus on somebody else. Quite frankly, let's get this out of the way. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just tuning in, this is the Halo World Championship 2016. You're on board with Miles the Wrath Ross, and of course Michael Kavanaugh, aka Strongside, the Living Legend. And now you can see us in the background. Hey, wave to Mum. We're almost ready to get this game underway, I believe. And I think it's going to be Rick TS and Oh boy, we are ready to kick this one off. Let's see. Look at the chaos unfolding already. Looks like one kill on the board already for Epsilon. I don't think Camo made it out alive, but we, I'd be nice to be exciting to see where that one goes. Snipe Drone making some big plays there with that scatter shot. I'm a huge fan of the scatter shot, Mike. What do you think of the scatter? Did you have much input into the design of that weapon? Oh, yes, we did. We did. And if you uh, have got to use it a little bit, you know it, it does have a ricochet feature. You can bounce it off the ground, bounce it off the wall to a, a hiding suspect or a hiding victim around the corner. But we already see Snipe Drone in good position, picking up a kill. He's got control of the scatter shot. Uh, sniper nowhere to be found uh, just yet. I think Camo was burned. Uh, possibly Sniper as well. Uh, no players. Actually, I think we just saw a shot. Buck 20 with the Sniper. Let's hop on board with him. He is in the position of Jimbo. You know what? what's really awesome about this? They can trust any player on this team to do any job because we've talked about how Snipe Drone is the player that sits back in the corner, and now we see Buck20 taking Cloud's face, looking to take another face here on Dinoxide. He's gonna stay alive, good play by Buck20, waiting for some help from his teammate. He's gonna be taken down. Now Snipe Drone back there with the scatter shot, trying to pick up a kill. He stays alive, waiting for another player pushing up from the tower. Looks like Hysteria picked up the Sniper and ran. He's gonna be taken down, and Snipe Drone says, you know what? Give me that sniper back. Look at that incredibly disciplined play there from Epsilon Esports. They came under pressure from a nice push from Cloud9, but only maybe two or three members made it across. They managed to stay alive. Again, Snipe Drone not dying from that push when he was in the bunker. He didn't go down. So by not dying, he managed to do huge damage on the guy in Tower 2, get the kill, and now he's back with sniper rifle control. And it looks like Buck20 caught out of position slightly, but it seems that, honestly, at the beginning of this game, Epsilon looked very, very much at home. Camo is going to be coming up here soon, Miles, so these players are going to be setting up for it. I'm going to guess it was around the 9.53 mark. Uh, it was burned early in the game, uh, so these players are getting ready for this. Snipe Drone getting in position like he always does with the Sniper. Uh, Bucks and Jimbo just crowding around the camo area, waiting for this camo to pop. Let's see if we can actually hop on board with one of them to see if they're going to pick up camo. No, I do not see any players picking up camo right now. Uh, Snipe Drone just staying alive with the scatter shot sniper combo right now. Doing a great job. Great job. Look at his positioning right now. He's doing an excellent job of getting new angles on members of Cloud9 who are pushing in on him. And he's also doing a great job of staying alive. So I'm really 
enjoying what Sniper is doing right now. And look at this potential. He's going to get the guy running. No, he doesn't. Go around the corner. And the slight duck dodge weave manages to duck underneath that headshot. Good job there from that member of C9. And it looks like that is going to be Sniper Rifle out. However, uh, it looks like... Oh, here we go. Nice job by Sniper. And I was just about to say, it looks like they're leaving this part of the map open. And with Sniper coming up in a few seconds, it is extremely important for them to be in a position to grab this new one. It looks like the engagement for Sniper is happening. Good job by Jimbo. Uh, staying alive there, but Cloud is in position to grab that one. Interesting choice of weapons from Sniper Drone right now. He doesn't have anything sort of too long range to grab that one. There's a hard target medal. That means that his shields have come back five times now. So he's doing an insanely good job of staying alive just as he dies there. 19 to 13 right now for Epsilon Esports. And Hysteria has just grabbed that sniper rifle. Yeah, we were just saying how Epsilon, this is their, their best game type. They are up 19 to 13, but now Hysteria with the sniper rifle. Now it's changed up a bit here. Now we see Cloud9 in the same exact spot Epsilon was. Hysteria in the spot that Snipe, snipe Drone just was minutes ago. Just looking to pick off a headshot here or there to peel a face off. But you know what? Assault and Dinoxide are just picking up kills left and right, slowly bringing that back. If I'm Epsilon right now, I'm... Oh, my God. Oh, my God, God dude. What Hysteria. a shot. <laughs> Taking the face of Snipe Drone right there. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful play by him. But uh, Epsilon is slowly losing their lead right now. That's right there. That's a good play by Hysteria, but bad play by Buck57. He shouldn't be standing out in the middle of the hallway like that. That is the prime spot of a sniper that is going to be looking through that hallway. Now the lead is brought down to two kills. We see all the players from Epsilon just, they keep dying over and over. They need to make one good fluent push, one big wave all together. Once they get a player weak or a player killed, they all need to make that push. We see Camo up right now. I think Denoxide just picked it up, and he is taken down. So Camo is going to be burned. Hysteria trying to stay alive with the sniper. He's got players pushing him from all angles. Jimbo comes in with the scatter shot, picking up the double kill. Let's hop on board with Jimbo. Jimbo's hunting Wabbits there in Tower 2. 24 to 19. Mike, we saw Cloud9 in position. They had the inside of the map. That is generally the more favorable position to be getting kills in this game type. But now, this the change, the, like it looks like Epsilon has managed to not only take back map control, but now Snipe Drone has Snipe in his hand, and we just missed a shot on Dinoxide. However, he is very much at home. He's in Snipe Drone Tower. And doesn't quite have the nicest ring to it, but it is very much where he lives. And it seems he's going to be doing what he can to help his teammates. Good job, 57 there, getting the trade. And oh, I thought that was going to happen. But lo, oh, he's going to get it, baby. Snipe down, taking out Dinoxide there. Good job. Gets the Guardian Angel. However, nice play from Hysteria. Good nade coming out there, shutting down that sniper rifle. And oh, Salt's going to be brought down by Jimbo 1v1. Jimbo once again dominating that 1v1 game right now. He's just not missing shots. He's playing so strong. Uh, and still 29-24. This game is very, very much far from over. But Mike, I, I, I'm not sure how, what either of these teams have to do right now to really stretch this lead and make it a little bit safer for them right now. So right now we see Epsilon to, to stretch this lead. They're setting up for the next for the next sniper rifle. Snipe Drone still has a sniper rifle uh, with a few shots left, and then they're going to pick up the next one. Jimbo with a nice little jump right there. If many of you don't know that, that's a nice little sneaky jump to get you up to the tower from bottom tower. Uh, Jimbo holding top tower with a scatter shot. We saw Buck taken down. Jimbo going in for the double. Can he get it? Yes, he does. Jimbo playing strong here over at the tower side of the map. Snipe drone looking to get the sniper, but no. Hysteria actually picked up the sniper. He's going to be looking for Jimbo at the top tower. Jimbo knows that there's players over there. He's going to stay alive here. Hysteria still at the back corner. Let's hop on board with Hysteria real quick, who's got the sniper looking for Jimbo. Now we know Jimbo is up there. Jimbo fires off a scatter to see if there's anyone hiding behind the corner. Nice play by him. Bouncing the scatter shot, and what you were asking about earlier is exactly what he just did with bouncing the scatter shot in Hysteria, picking up another kill on Buck 57. That's the third time Buck 57 has been sniped from that angle. He has not, he needs to not go to that hallway anymore. It's just making them lose their lead. We saw Epsilon make one big wave of a push and regain control. They need to do that again. It looks like there is something very big happening on the other side of the map where Cloud has just picked up Camo, and it looks like he's not going to be able to get a kill. He had the drop Five there on a member of remaining. Epsilon. It looked like Buck 20. Buck 20 turned around and said, not today, and managed to kill him there. Very unfortunate play there from C9. They are not going to be able to capitalize on that camouflage. And maybe, maybe Hysteria is going to be picking up a few more kills here. He's doing tremendous work for his team right now. This 
this sniper rifle is proving to be the absolute key factor for them getting kills out this one. As Epsilon are playing this duck and weave guerrilla warfare style of play, in and out of these corners, getting shots on players, coming out from, from separate angles and getting the picks. And it looks like Hysteria is doing what he can to hold this one down. And Jimbo is still in that tower. 57 coming back for a little bit more, but he seemed to learn that time, Mike. Yeah, I was going to say, if he gets sniped again, there is something wrong right now. But you see Buck57 picking up a kill on Cloud9, or excuse me, Cloud, and Buck57 picking up two more kills on Assault and Dinoxide. And Hysteria is taken down. That's the wave push we were looking for. Snipe Drone with the Sniper now. They have turned this around and taken an eight kill lead. Sniper in the hands of Snipe Drone, and that's why right there, taking the face of cloud that this is incredible stuff right now from Epsilon Esports. They've turned this around entirely. They managed to rotate the position there. Snipe drone with snipe in hand. You can see him getting kills. Look at all of his teammates right now. We've got Alex watching the barrels. We've got Jimbo. Looks like he's on catwalk almost. And you see 57 now patrolling Yellow Hall and every an engine area covering his guys. And oh, nice shot there. Almost getting the headshot on Cloud. And look, Snipe drone, he's covering these angles for Jimbo. He knows that Jimbo's got damage on and the enemy's going to be coming from behind him, but he's all over that. Nice use of Plasma Caster there to shut down Snipe drone. And Dinoxide just fell off the map. That is not what you want at this stage. Tower 2 now. Oh, and Snipe Drone again. Taking down Hysteria. He's not going to let anyone have that tower. This is fast out of the map, he says. He had some hang time right there. He's got the auto stabilized turned on, got the hang time and picked up the headshot. Now out of Sniper though. Next Sniper coming up in less than 15 seconds. They just need to hold this area. You see Snipe Drone covering the Buck Twin down there. Alex right underneath him doing a great job. You were just saying how he was covering Jimbo doing an excellent job with that. Snipe Drone staying alive, waiting for his team. You see Buck57 picking up two kills, flanks up behind them. Beautiful teamwork by Epsilon. This is what we need to see from the rest of the series from Epsilon. We didn't see that too much in the game, in the replay game, but now we're really seeing things come together for this team. Both players team working, excuse me, using teamwork to take down Assault right there, just collapsing on any player that tries to make a push. Oh, and Snipe Drone is going for the highlight reel right now. They only need one kill left in it. It seems like Cloud9, they really fell apart the seams towards the end of this series, between the end of this game, excuse me, Mike. Oh, and wait a minute, he's going for the highlight reel. He's going for it. This is, the, the disrespect is real. What an incredible se game so far. Series so far is out of this world. Dude. I've never seen Epsilon lose that game type. You have I, I, I don't think they've ever lost that game type. I don't think it's possible. I, I think if, when you have Snipe Drone and Jimbo, it's just not possible. I'd love to take a look at those stats, though. That was incredible gameplay by Epsilon. Just, I mean, played it by the book, absolutely by the book. Just, we've seen them time and time again in the past. Just execute that strategy, and it works for them every single time. They got every sniper. Uh, there you see it, Jimbo with 16 and 10 assists. Big numbers from him, and Bucks going 21 together, 21, but Snipe Drone and Jimbo going 28 kills together. Big kills from everyone on their team, a lot of teamwork. I like how Snipe Drone only had five deaths, playing a bit more passive. That's his role on the team. I am disappointed to see Dinoxide get two suicides there. That seems like somebody who's kind of flustered, doesn't quite know how to get kills in these situations because Epsilon's setup was so strong. So he's kind of making these crazy plays, jumping out into angles he probably shouldn't be jumping out into and finding himself at the bottom of the rig, somewhere in the desert where his sun-bleached body will maybe be found by another set of Spartans having a fight on that map later Ages today. from now. <laughs> Ages, ages from now because this series is nowhere near finished mike incredible stuff so far we're tied up one apiece in this series so far epsilon versus cloud nine here on the side stage at the halo world championships 2016 just in case you're wondering oh mike this is incredible <laughs> This is the incredible. most pivotal Halo event of all, all time. time. I'm going to keep saying that over <laughs> and over this weekend. This is huge. And, and for so Halo, should. we are, and, and we so are bringing should, like. everything back when, it talk, when we talk about esports in Halo, competitive Halo. We are rising back up. We are going to be bigger than ever. We are not going anywhere. Halo is here to stay. And we are just growing every single day. We, we see just events constantly happening, not just... The events here, we see a lot, a lot more little like local lands happening from time to time. You see a lot more little tournaments happening from, uh, from all over. Uh, just we're really, we're really coming together and uh, having this event. Just top 16 teams, with the skill level with all these teams, just so, so close to each other. It's just 
the competition is fierce, and it's it's awesome to be here. It's about as fierce as it gets. Now, continuing this series onwards, we uh, we've got another game type coming up. Obviously, for those of you who haven't uh, who've just joined us, we've got Eden. Yes, we do. We have Eden Strongholds coming up now, uh, which for me, I think. I, I, I want to make a gut call here, and I want to give this one to C9. I think objectively C9 have a stronger game than Epsilon. I think Epsilon will probably come out hard at the beginning. We saw this on the very first game of Coliseum CTF. They come out strong. They have initially uh, they have a, a very strong opening strat, and they're good at maintaining control in the beginning, but they kind of ran out of endurance towards the mid game, and then especially towards the late game, where they gave it away to C9. So Mike, early, early, uh, early predictions from me. I'm going to give this one to C9 based on the precedent they've set in game one and 1.5. All right, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go epsilon. Let's go epsilon. I, I, I honestly, there's a sniper on the map. Even though there was a sniper on the map with Coliseum, we've got snipe drone. Get him the sniper. Let Jimbo and the Bucks do their business. Let them let them just run around the map. Get the overshield. Get the camo and just go ham. Just go ham. For those of you wondering what ham stands for, it stands as hard as mud, I believe. I think it's mud. It's definitely not anything else, right? That's it what just means like going hot, going, yeah. as, going as hard as you can, yeah. going as strong as you can. Uh, there you've got it, Jimbo. Uh, all these guys still feeling really relaxed. we got a big crowd watching over on the side station here. We're going to be streaming every single match this weekend. That is why we have two streams going on, so you do not miss a single match throughout this entire event. You're going to be watching every single game happen, and uh, we're going to start kicking off game number three here. Who do you want to hop on board with, Miles? I would like to begin this game with probably Denoxide. I'll kick some of Denoxide. Let's cl slowly climb into that man's screen. There we go. He's going to be uh, pushing out kind of early and old. Oh, hot damn. Look at that pistol skin, Mike. Good God, that's beautiful. I right, just put that one away quite quick. Anyway, look at this. Top mid control now. Catwalk, the battle for Catwalk happening. It looks like uh, it may be going to C9 early on, but Rockets are in the hands of none other than Jimbo. He's not going to be getting a kill there, but he's definitely doing a lot of damage for his team. Uh, again, early stages of uh, of Stronghold's games usually can be quite, it's quite a formality, you know. You capture your Stronghold, they capture their Stronghold, and you fight over the one in the middle. This one was a little bit different, but I don't want to go into that too much just yet because it looks like Epsilon are now two bases in control, and Cloudmind haven't actually captured anything yet, so it looks like Catwalk is still up for grabs for whoever wants it. Uh, again, strong play there. Oh, and looks like Sniper is unfortunately going to be on the receiving end of Jimbo's rocket there. That is definitely not what you want at this stage of the tournament. Buck20 making a big play on Blue Ben there as it transfers hands into Cloud9. Again, Again, Catwalk has still not been captured yet, Mike. No one is going up there. Is it? Is there something wrong with that stronghold right now? Like, what's going on? Is it? It's, it seems like the leper stronghold. Look, it's no one's still captured it. It's still up there. It it's seems so very. Close. It's very close for somebody. But who's it? Oh, it looks like Epsilon Lee Spot. They're going to finish one up, and they are going to have finally captured that one. And Red Nest. Oh, great play there from C9. Red Nest captured. A lot of players' shields were down there, but Hysteria now staying alive, getting the defense of Red Nest, and looks like he's going to be making that move straight towards Catwalk. Oh, and unfortunately, he's not going to make that job. Yes, and when you were talking about strategies here, uh, there's a lot of different strategies that these teams have here. Uh, we've, we've seen the strategy of just kind of going in a circle and rotating back and forth, back and forth, when you control three, and then the, the other team is going to spawn at one of those, and you lose that, and then you kind of just go in this big circular rotation. Uh, there is the strategy that players uh, do try to get a hold of, but it's very hard to... to to execute. Basically, all players will be spawning all around the map because all three strongholds are captured. You have players from one team all over the map. Hysteria picking up a big triple kill as I'm talking about strategy right there. But now he's got the rockets. He's going to get overshield hit, overshield here as well. And a big combo here to, to really take, uh, a, excuse me, to turn around this game type now that that Epsilon is winning without any power-ups or power weapons. I'd like to see Epsilon doing that kind of scrappy play, but whoa, Hysteria caught off guard there. What a lunge. Oh my good God, Buck 57 with the, like, I want to call it like, Buck Jitsu. He came out of nowhere and he managed to, like, the lunge was huge. He did so much damage to Hysteria's OS there without managing to be killed for a while, so crazy play from him. But, Mike, going back to what you are saying about the Bucks not the Bucks and Epsilon not having any power for control, amazing stuff, because Hysteria just had the OS, he's still got rockets, and now they have a trip cap. And I think that is something that is, we're going to play that one down to the fact that they have much better, uh, you know, power up and power up and control pickups, if you will, on the map. And now, look, that trip cap is very strong for them. You see Assault on your screen there. He has camouflage as well. So all the toys are definitely in the pram of Cloud9 right now. Epsilon need to do something to break that desperate cycle that they're in of spawning and being hit by much heavier guns than they have equipped. Yeah, we're seeing a lot more teamwork come from Cloud9 here as they try and rally back. But Epsilon, like you said, they're scrappy little gameplay. They just, they're ro constantly rotating, just 
capturing a, a stronghold back and forth, really making it hard for Cloud9 to, to set up. You see Cloud9 uh, trying to set up, but this isn't really a game type where you can necessarily set up and just have one one hold. It's it's a fast game type. You got to be aggressive. You got to be moving around constantly. But now we're seeing Cloud9 make their rally back, only down six points to Epsilon. Hysteria trying to stay alive, does a good job at that. We see him hanging around here all the time. Overshield is going to be popping up here soon. So we're going to need to see someone on Cloud9 go for go for this Overshield. I think uh, Assault, actually, no, sorry, not Assault. Uh, no one is in place to get it. Let's hop on board with Dinoxide, though, who's trying to keep players out of that top stronghold. We've just seen the change in the tables now. Oh, it's actually just flipped back before I could even finish the sentence. It looks like C9 are back in control of two strongholds here, and the Battle for Rockets are now taking place. Dinoxide doing a great job of staying alive, and his teammate is going to get the kill there. You see that distraction medal on your screen. That means that a player who was shooting at him has now been killed, so well done. Cloud9 there doing an excellent job staying alive and again, maintaining power for control. This is absolutely huge. They're still grabbing, although look, this this a super scrappy play from Epsilon grabbing Blue Ben, but I don't think it'll be very long lived. Oh, and what are these rockets did outside? Who, who are you shooting at, dude? These are such pocket rockets here at the World Champs, but strong pistol shots. And there is that noble pistol skin, Mike. I'm, I'm a little distracted every time I see it. Look at that shiny thing. So that's sweet. It's almost like a throwback to, uh, to Halo Reach almost. Ooh, I'm getting kind of getting kind of excited. And whoa, there are too many members of Epsilon Esports for Dinoxide to handle there as he's brought down. But look again, Cloud, trip cap. OS in hand of Cloud there, and he's going to be killed, but there's another camo. Who's got the camo there? Hysteria is using camo right now. Let's see what he can do. He's, it looks like he's in a very sneaky position. And there he is on screen. He's going to be attacking Buck57, taking him down as well. And as a trip cap is still now happening, Catwalk, will they get it? Yes, they will. They managed to sort of to, to, to end that trip cap spree there that, that Cloud9 were having such a good time with. God, look at this 1v1 engagement, Mike. Who's going to get it? What a kill by Hysteria. Uh, I was going to just say how well of a job they are doing controlling the spawns. See, they're allowing them to keep Catwalk right now. They're going to be spawning in tower. They know that. So they're just waiting to, for these players to, to fall out from the tower. And actually, yep, Jimbo's hiding right back in tower. By them pushing up as well, it's going to force the Epsilon crew to spawn on the outside of tower now and spawn around the map. Now we see them losing Red Nest right now. Epsilon getting the three cap, turning things around right now. They have a long ways to go, but in Stronghold, the game is never over. It could be 99 to one. And if you're the team that has one point, it is still not over. Strongholds, anything can happen. The game can always be turned around. We see Rockets are still up. It is, and we are at the five minute uh, 50 mark. Overshield should be up. Camo should be coming up. So a lot can happen here with uh, Epsilon still with the three cap. Huge job there from Hysteria to stay alive and manage to keep that uh, to keep the capture running. Now you see Sniper on. Let's jump on board with him. He's got those rockets and the overshield in his hands. Uh, let's see what sort of damage he can do for his team. There we see him now. Still has over 50% of that overshield. That's very important right now because it is going to help them maintain control of Red Nest and Blue Bend. As you can see on your score uh, the, on the screen, the bottom right hand corner, 66 to 77. Unless C9 can do something about that second stronghold. And as I say, here it goes. Blue Bend now. The capture is in progress. We're at 50%. However, Jimbo. Oh, Sniper with the rockets. No, he's not going to get anyone with it. And he's going to be pushed back. Great play by C9. They're going to get the kill. That looks like Blue Bend is definitely now in control for Cloud9. That was a very impressive play and a little bit of a choke on behalf of Sniper. And he did miss that crucial rocket. Cloud now, 57, is going to be caught in a very bad place. And while Cloud may exchange a little bit of friendly fire with his teammate there, it looks like Red Nest will be in their hands. No, it will not. Great nades from Epsilon. Uh, it looks like Denoxide, I believe, has the camo. He's going to be staying alive there. Triple cap now for C9. Oh, and as I say it, Epsilon Esports are going to pull that one back. Oh, look at this Epsilon. I've actually managed to get two bases, Mike. What a turnaround. I looked away for a second, and now it's back on board. And a huge, aggressive play there from Epsilon, trying to keep that positioning they have at the moment. These two bases are so crucial right now, 88 to 74. The comeback is slowly but surely happening as C9 have to dig their heels in and to try to get out of the situation. They're in right now, 57, 1v1. He's not going to be affected by the strafe of Dan Oxide. One on one now. Uh, sorry, let's jump on board with 57. He had a nice little kill there. We haven't given him too much love. Much love to Will Buck, the other half of the twins. And he sees he's now pushing in on Blue Ben. He's anticipating the spawn in Blue Base. There's Cloud. Two members in. Nice damage. Staying alive is crucial. Catwalk is simultaneously being captured now. This is absolutely huge for Cloud9. They are going to be able to turn the tide there. I believe it's still happening. However, 87 to 88. 88 all right now. It is happening. The turnaround is slowly but surely happened. C9 have been pushed and pushed to the brink 
of their position right now. And there comes the Rainbow Assault Rifle, and no, Denoxide's SMG will come up one-on-one -on -one with him. And Mike, what is going on right now? That was a big kill by Denoxide right there. Unfortunately, he is taken down. We're at 94, excuse me, 95 to 88. Epsilon with two cap. It looks like they're gonna be able to get this. No one is stopping Red Nest or Blue Bend. Epsilon could take game number three to go up 2-1 in the series. Players trying to take the catwalk. Can they get it? No, they're not able to. And Epsilon Esports is going to take game number three, leading 2-1 in the series. Wow, what a comeback. We saw a huge deficit from Epsilon at the beginning there. We saw incredible power weapon and power up control from Cloud9. Such discipline plays, incredibly well done by them. However, it seemed that scrappiness, it was like being so structured and so rigid, Epsilon were kind of breaking the rules and bending the rules, and they got around that, that sort of kind of concrete robotic nature of, of C9's play on that map. And then like out of nowhere, they got a couple of trip caps, a few clutch overshields towards the end. We saw Buck20 get it twice in a row. And that sort of played huge into their hands. Although Jimbo, uh, Snipe Drone, excuse me, I've got them confused several times today. Snipe Drone missing a couple of rockets with their OS play, but buying enough time for his team to come in and help him out as he as he fell around the blue brand area towards the end of that game. Amazing stuff. 188, Mike. Damn, this is, this is seriously going off. And it's still only the very first series here on the side stream. We have a very long and exciting day ahead of us, guys. Yeah, Epsilon just playing that really well, like you said. Uh, de uh, de definitely starting off very strong in, this, in the middle of the game. Cloud9 really turned the game around. Uh, but we saw, yeah, we, uh, we actually saw quite a bit of pocket rockets happen. We didn't see much capitalizing with the rockets, we, but... We did see that surface-to-air missile that uh, Denoxide tried to fire against. I think it was Buck 20, and he was, Just like, in the air. through the air. He fired two of them. Yeah. He wasted two rockets on a guy in the air. I mean, he was feeling himself, and he was like, I can make the highlights reel of Halo World Champs, right, with a mid-air rocket? Like, okay, maybe. But he did miss both, and he was brought down then quite quickly, which was deeply unfortunate. Yeah, and when, when you look at Epsilon's strategy, too, it was, like you said, very... It was kind of scrappy. Uh, they just they kept that uh, rotation constantly going, just in a circle. They were just going around the map constantly, capturing uh, the nest, capturing top catwalk, going over to Blue Bend. It was just it was all over, and it seemed uh, yeah like Cloud9 couldn't really like yeah. come to terms with what to do. They were they were very thrown off by it. Uh, but Epsilon just coming through and hey. Predicted Epsilon to win. You called it, dude. You called it. Who? Let's, <laughs> you did call it. But let's have a quick look at how this series is unfolding so far. For those of you who have just joined us, Cloud9, 2-0 in Coliseum CTF. But boy, does that to not tell the whole story, because that was actually a replay of the first game, which went down 2-2 in overtime. Uh, and this was actually a replay. So of course, game number two was a very dominant display by Epsilon, 50-34 to on Rig TS. And of course, you see the last one, if you've just joined us, that was 100-88, to a fantastic comeback from Epsilon Esports against Cloud9 here in game one of D Group's uh, group play. And boy, howdy, Mike, is it getting good. True CTF up next. How do you think this one's going to play out? You know, this is a tough one to call. We've seen uh, Epsilon play really well against the European teams on this game type. Uh, but when it comes to the NAA teams, they do play this game type a little bit different uh, when controlling spawns, forcing players to spawn in the bubbles, uh, and making sure they capitalize on the flag run once they get one or two down, just initiating that flag run. Uh, so I'm really interested to see how this one uh, turns out. I don't know if Epsilon can win this game type. I, I do feel strongly about them going into game five, but uh, when we look at game four, I think I'm going to have to go cloud nine here. We've just got some of some Mike. veteran players who have been around since Halo 2, and yep. these guys love the midships. They love they love truth. Mike, so you want a, you want a final game, don't you? You want to take this one all the way to five. I may I, I may want a game five. Yeah, I, think, I may want a game I think five, we want a game five. to overtime down to the wire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get game five eventually. But until then, we still have Truth CTF to play. Again, of course, Epsilon are up 2-1 right now in this series against C9. Again, we cannot play, uh, we cannot stress how important this series is for both of these teams right now, because the winner of this could arguably be going through at a later stage. Let's have a look at how Truth CTF is going to kick this one off. And whoa, it looks like a very strong start for C9, who now have control of the camouflage. The Noxide is going to be having a whale of a time with that one as he moves in very quickly into Epsilon's base. Let's have another look at his teammates and see what they're doing to support him here. We see Hysteria. We're not going to jump in Hysteria. Let's go to Cloud. Let's see what Cloud's doing. Whoa, just sweet. Look at that. Huge play from Tenoxide. He's going to get a double here, potentially. Good job there, but he will be brought down. Let's see uh, what another member of his team is doing. I'd like to jump on board with Cloud, because uh, Denoxide is still sitting high and mighty right now. Uh, but regardless of that, let's keep on moving with Denoxide. He's having a good time. Whoa, it's Cloud time. Uh, and there we see shots on 57. Plasma Cast is still up for grabs, a weapon that I am extremely fond of, and I think everyone should be as well. 
Flag move there from Snipe Drone. However, he's going to be brought down quite comfortably at 57. Oh, 20. What opting, a move. Opting opting for for the 20. Sword. Oh my god, he just whips out the sword. <laughs> Speed Demon's right at him, just charges him like a bull, takes him down. Let's hop on board with Hysteria. Uh, He's sitting back in the flag. So this is kind of like a classic strategy. You lay down a lot of cover fire. But flag, excuse me, while I'm saying that, I didn't even notice cap number one from Epsilon already happened. Uh, and players uh, players are just, at, at least for me, I'm astonished right now. I don't even think Hysteria knew what was going on. I couldn't tell from his expression going on in the camera. But now Hysteria pushing into the base, getting shots on Kim, uh, uh, excuse me, Jimbo. He's going to be taken down. Let's hop on board with Jimbo now, who's playing some good defense. Now, we did see these guys play uh, the same game type against the US team, and Jimbo had a bit of a crazy choke. For those that were there, for those who watched it on stream, we saw Jimbo make a very uh, unusual play using the flag and a lift. But we don't need to go into that one now because that's forgotten, long forgotten. Let's hope we not see any repeats of that as Jimbo aggressively pushing across the pink side now, helping out his teammates. I like to see this nice nade there. He's going to be contesting pink tower now, obviously. For those of you at home not wondering what the hell we're talking about, Pink Tower is possibly the most important part of the map. Maybe not necessarily in H5, but it has always been a staple of map control in this game. And you see Cloud taking down clean shots from 57. Snipe Drone making a good play right here, though. He's waiting for camo. He gets the camo. Is he going to be able to stay alive? Yes, he gets some help from his teammates there. Getting naded. He's just got to stay around here right now because his shields are flashing. Still getting picked. And, and being seen, he hides behind the little peg here, bottom mid, and yes, he's going to be able to stay alive. Nice play by Snipe Drone. This is the time for them to capitalize, to push into the base, to get another flag cap. You see Snipe Drone just playing this really slow right now, just trying to stay alive. He, he has camo. There's no, there's no reason to rush anything right now. Unfortunately, he does trade. He is going to be taken down uh, from players on Cloud9. Now we see players over under the base, and we see the Bucks trying to push in right now. That was an unfortunate play there from Snipe Drone. You saw he crouch walked quite a lot when his shields were down. He was doing everything he could to not be seen by his opponents, and unfortunately blew that one away. And whoa, Jimbo flying across map, makes the superhero landing on Hysteria's face. He's going to get that one as his guy's pushing in now. Huge pressure on C9's base. 57 now, 1v1. Look at that strafe going up close with Denoxide. A resource going to get the kill. Oh, oh, sorry, Denoxide is going to get the kill on the Assault 1v1. Now, Mike, look at this pink control battle now happening. It looks like... C9 are in a very tough spot right now. The initiative is very much in the hands of Epsilon Esports, and they seem to be outslaying Cloud9 quite effectively on this map so far. Yeah, Jimbo is making a push over into Pink 2 right now. They're getting the flag out. Not going to be able to get this flag going, though. Two players down from Epsilon. It looks like Hysteria is going to get the flag returned. Yes, he does, as they make their way, pushing over to Pink. A lot of team shots happening from Cloud9, but not able to get out of their base. Just stuck inside their base right there. Buck's pushing back in. Jimbo's pushing back in. We've got Snipe Drone making his way over to Pink 2. Let's hop on board with him. Just, you see Will, excuse me, is that Buck 57? Is Will? Yep, yeah, it, it so is. Buck 57. We've seen him in Cloud9's base over and over again. Snipe Drone's going to be taken down, but a lot more pressure coming from the Epsilon side than the Cloud9 side. Huge pressure. I really liked seeing Snipe Drone be brought down there in Tomidor. That's such a powerful position, and it seemed to remember Cloud9 managed to get the angle from behind and get the pick on him as he was putting pressure on the guys in the window. And now, look, Camo is up, and it looks like Jimbo's going to go 1v1 with Hysteria now. Huge play. Denoxide coming out of nowhere with that Flagnum kill. He is going to get that one. It looks like Camo is definitely in the hands of somebody. Hysteria does have that one. Uh, Epsilon's flag is still out in the game right now. It is very much out in no man's land. This is a difficult flag, not just to return, but also to capture. It's such an open place. And there is a splinter grenade now sitting atop of the flag. So any player that runs through that will be killed instantly. 20 is going to get a nice double there. Can he get the triple on the camo guy? Yes, he worked a double kill, but that's still a very good play there. Strong shots from Buck20 right now. Really, really enjoying that. Uh, let's have a look at Jimbo, who's doing everything he can to get this flag back, but C9 are doing an amazing job of continuing that run. They're not letting that one go down quietly in Cloud, somehow not getting the kill on Jimbo with that Storm Rifle, and Jimbo's going to get him. Look at this, the flag return is very much as a possibility right now as two members of C... Oh, Jimbo with the perfect five and the flag return right there. He is playing out of his skin right now, Mike. This is a chance for a counter cap. We just saw them fight over and over again to stop that flag. Now they're making their push in. They have a player down on C9. Gets the ground pound for the kill on Hysteria. Jimbo picking up the double kill, looking to get the flag run right now. Buck 57 moving it over to Pink. 
Jimbo giving them some cover. They're gonna have to stop the flag over here, over at the car side of the map. Jimbo needs to be making a flank right now. He makes, he's starting to make the flank right now. Realizes he's not gonna have some help for a little bit. Picks up the grenade kill. One on one, top car, no, he is not gonna be able to get it. Let's hop on board with Assault, who is right there trying to get a flag touch on that flag. Yes, he does. Almost runs in to the splinter grenade and kills himself, but he is still alive. Player above him, he's taken down. Jimbo, that is him picking up the kill there to get the flag return. Are they gonna be able to solidify the flag cap? Or is the flag back? I think the flag was it returned. It was returned, Mike. They've unleashed the Jimbo. They've released him. It's kind of like in when Bane, the old school Bane from Batman Forever. He hits that thing on his chest and he just becomes this monster, becomes this Hulk that no one can stop. Jimbo is playing absolutely out of his mind right now, running a pain train through Kyle 9. They don't seem to have an answer for him. There's Jimbo again, 1v1 with Hysteria. We can't stop him. I hate to give so much bias towards a single player, but he really is doing it for his team right now. There we see Dinoxide camo in hand. What can they do right now? It looks like Epsilon's flag is out again. Cloud9 are getting the pulls. They're getting the flag out of the base. They're making smart, aggressive pushes. They're getting in there and getting the flags out. But on the return, like Epsilon seem to be there every single time at the doorstep, willing to stop that flag runner. What are they doing wrong right now, Mike? Yeah, they're just not, they're not, I, I don't want to say they're not working together, but because they are, they're, they're just not staying alive at the right times. Like a player taken down right there, Cloud, no reason for him to die right there. Could have stayed up at pink two. There was no players in pink two. Hysteria. Now pink one by himself. Now he's gonna get tag team possibly. Yep, tag team there by Snipe Drone and a buck. You, you're just seeing a lot of in, more individual plays happening from Cloud9, which we didn't see as much earlier in some of the past games. We saw a lot more teamwork from them. I think Epsilon is really just fired up now, especially after that mining rig match, and they're just really clicking. They feel very comfortable. Uh, Cloud9 just very, very much so on an individual type of, of gameplay here. You, look at that, two guys top middle taking him down, uh, taking down Hysteria using their teamwork. Uh, just. They're really putting on a clinic, Mike. Look at the damage done by them. But one thing I'm very worried about, what do we see from Epsilon Esports in game number one? Yes, they have a strong flag game initially, but they seem to lose that pressure. They take their foot off of the pedal, and then all of a sudden, look at this. We're seeing another flag run by Jimbo. I'm about to eat those words, but it could potentially still happen. I'm going to expect the ground pound, Jim. Give it to me, Jim. Give it to me. And he gives it to us. 2-0 right now for Epsilon Esports against Cloud9. This is game number four in the first series. Oh, Jim's going to eat his own split grenade. That was almost a very unfortunate death. Now, is this the turning point, Mike? Will Epsilon release the pressure and give C9 what they want and see them tie this one up, or are Epsilon going to be able to close it out? You know, we saw in Kali CTF, we saw them go up 2-0, and then we saw them blow that lead and play a lot more uh, defensive, but we are seeing the exact opposite this time. Jimbo is playing so aggressive. He's in their face. He's making sure that that does not happen again. Then you see Buck 57 over behind him, making his way in. Jimbo just giving a nice death screen there for Buck. Uh, let's hop on. Let's let's just stay on Jimbo then. You want to stay on Jimbo? I was going to say but we haven't we haven't changed from Jimbo in quite some time, but he is having a very good game right now. It is safe to say. I would like to see what's going on with Assault. He does have camouflage right now, and he is in the front of uh, of another player's base. Uh, I'm sorry, of, of Epsilon Space, how he's still rocking and rolling. Oh, okay, we're on board with Cloud. Let me take all that back. J Sniper is about to take a very big hit. Double kill for Cloud. He's in a good position right now. He's escorting his flag carrier, however it looks like. Uh, no, they are, they've pulled this one out. Excuse me, I got a little bit confused there. It's hell of exciting right now on the side stage. There is a tremendous crowd watching these two teams duke it out. Potentially, Epsilon could be winning this game and almost sealing the fate of Cloud9 here at the Halo World Championships. 2-0 right now, again, flags on the move, but it looks like another member of Epsilon in the base there. Great shot, 57 is gonna be taken down. Hysteria needs to get this return. There is plenty of time. Oh, oh and Jimbo comes out of nowhere gosh, with the ground pound. Jimbo. He gets a double and assault as well, and is he gonna get the return? He does. Oh my God, Jimbo is absolute, he's a savage. This barbaric play from Jimbo, he's having a scream right now. I don't even know what to say anymore, Mike. Who are we gonna jump on board with? Let's 57. Hop on board with Puck 57. Jimbo is just making some of the clutches plays, and he is not letting down the pressure. No one on Epsilon is slowing down that pressure. You see them just constantly fighting, constantly rushing. Even the players from C9 are playing very uncharacteristic of themselves. They're just flushing out the bottom middle. They are able to get that return. Jimbo is gonna be taken down. Let's hop on board with Snipe Drone, though, who's gonna be pushing over to Pink with his teammate Alex. They're gonna be pushing over to Pink. He's getting some shots over at Pink One. Nice splinter grenade to actually, actually to, to keep him at bay down there, but they're gonna need to start pushing up. They take down Dinoxide, getting shots across the map with the pistol. A lot easier said than done when you see these top players shooting across the map like that with the pistol. They make it look so easy, and he's picking up a carbine kill. 
He's just on fire right now, just looks across the map while not having the first shot. All kinds of teamwork happening from Epsilon. Cloud9 getting stuck in their base. Can he pick this kill up? No, he's not going to be able to. Cloud9 returns back and is fighting to get out of their base. Camo up in play now. I just want to call Snipe Drone's excellent team awareness there. He did an incredible job of looking across map, doing great damage across the guy at Carbine side, getting the kills, and then immediately turning left, getting back to the base and helping out his teammate. Snipe Drone, eyes everywhere, ears are definitely engaged. He's listening to his teammates very well. 1v1 with Hysteria here. He might be taking him down there, but again, great pressure. Snipe Drone is very much feeling himself. All the members of... Excuse me, Mike. All the members of Epsilon are having a great game right now and C9 don't have too much they can do at this stage. Look at this interesting crouch play. It looks like, are they going to go for that final cap? I don't know what C9 can do in their next 45 seconds, but it's very possible they could bring this one back, but I don't know if it's even possible, Mike. So Snipe Drone, by taking that flag under the base, he's going to block the spawns underneath the base. And this was perfectly executed. He forced the spawns to happen either level two or at the bubble side on car, which they did spawn. And now he was able to get back with the flag virtually untouched with the flag in their base. They're going for the return right now. Is Epsilon going to be able to get the return? I'm looking at all eight screens right now. I do not see a player getting the return. What a splinter grenade by Snipe Drone picking up a clutch kill, keeping the flag alive in his base right now. No players on Epsilon alive though except for Snipe Drone. Now waiting for his players to spawn up. There's only five seconds left. They are going to win this game. It is an absolutely impossible. Epsilon Esports takes game number four to win in the series. Oh, dude, what a series. What an incredible upset. C9 taken down there in that first series by Epsilon Esports. I'm not sure who predicted this one, Mike. It was definitely you on this side of things, but those of you watching at home, incredible stuff. I cannot believe what we've just witnessed. This has been an amazing series. There is a roar, a roar of applause coming from that side of the stage. Amazing stuff there by both teams. What a series to watch. Obviously, we saw some I, will, I called it a slobber knocker to begin with, Mike, and I am not disappointed with my choice of words. Let's take a look at the stats real quick. Jimbo, 29 kills, 19 assists. Honestly, the slays across the board are not completely evenly matched, but I'd say within five or six kills. So the slays were back and forth. I think Cloud9 just, they could not get a flag back to their base. They could not rally it back. We saw them kind of just go off individually. They were fighting battles on their own. We were watching Hysteria for a bit and he was just getting tag teamed by, by the Buck Twins or, or it'd be Snipe Drone and Jimbo. Every single time he was getting into a battle, he would just be taken down by teamwork. We needed to see more teamwork from Cloud9. We did not see that. This isn't over though. There's a lot more to happen here in pool play, but Epsilon has got to be feeling pretty good after that first match of their tournament. They've got to be feeling great after having a very, very impressive display against some seriously, you know, prophilic uh, American players. So this is really, this is a big deal for European Halo, uh, especially a lot of the players who saw, everyone, everybody saw them at X Games and they were worried that, you know, maybe it was a fluke against uh, against Renegades. And, you know, now they've just had a fairly convincing series against C9. Again, different caliber teams, especially, uh, especially if you look at things like the Team Beyond Power Rankings, which are definitely something you should be looking at because it's very good content. Uh, regardless of that, an incredible series. For those of you who have just joined us, we finished game uh, series number one here on the side stream. We're playing around the groups C and D, and uh, that was group C. Incredible series to begin things off with. You've uh, you've missed a real treat. So if you can, I would definitely rewatch that series. Give game one a miss though, because it was a replay. It was a tie. But we technically went to game five then. We did technically go to game five. Technically, we went to game five with that replay. We got it for game number one. We got it, dude. We well it. done. Let's we did go. it. How many more game fives could we see at this tournament? Hopefully, a hell of a lot. Mike, I think we should. Uh, I think we should. We should. We should compose ourselves a more because there's a lot of Halo to come up Bend next down. on the stream. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave it now. I'm gonna, I want you guys to uh, to stay excited. So we're gonna cut to a quick commercial break, but we don't want you to go anywhere. Maybe put the kettle on if you're in the UK, or or enjoy a hot pocket. I don't know if you're in the US. I don't know what you guys eat out here. Or if wherever you are in the world, don't go far because it's just getting started over here.